What's going on guys? Today I'm gonna to be giving you my full length review on the Sony a7 III. One thing that's gonna be a little bit different about this review than other ones that you've seen online is the fact that I come from primarily using the GH5. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a different outlook on the camera, which I'll touch on at the end while I'll sum up certain things that I love about the GH5 more than this and vice versa. So it's gonna be a cool review. I do YouTube content, but my primary line of work is filming music videos. I wanted to see if this camera would be possible to produce quality music videos, as well as be that hybrid camera that I needed to film my own personal branding photography and videos for YouTube. So at the end of this video, I'll wrap this up telling you guys if this is the hybrid camera I've been looking for all along. So first and foremost, the ergonomics of the camera. Now, one thing that I do love about the Sony full frame line is it gives you a lot of customization from a user experience with all of the custom buttons that you're able to map on the camera. I've mapped mines into a couple different features and a couple different settings that I don't necessarily wanna go into the menu for and just carved it into the camera that I like to use the way I like to use it. Now coming from using the GH5, one thing that I absolutely hated about the camera when it came to creating this type of content right here was that the autofocus just was not good and it wasn't reliable. So coming to this system, I wanted to know for sure is the autofocus good enough to operate and be reliable for these types of videos that I'm creating for YouTube? So within that, let's dive straight into the video features. First on the list is autofocus. Is the autofocus in a Sony a7 III good? I would say it's pretty good. It's pretty reliable as well. I've seen mixed reviews about the autofocus within this camera online, so I was kind of skeptical about if it was gonna be good or if I was gonna be one of those people who were having terrible experiences with it. And all in all, my autofocus experience using the Sony a7 III has been amazing. I'm currently using a Sigma 24 millimeter f1.4 at this very moment, and I think I have it down to like a 1.6. And as you guys can see, it works pretty well. Like, put my hand up, it works, it comes back to my face. I do it again, it's pretty responsive, it's fast, it works. And like these types of videos right here, I can actually rely on this to hit the autofocus and stay there while I'm filming these videos and not drift off and kind of hunt. Like if I move my head out the way, it's gonna be responsive on the background. Then if I come back, it's it's good. I've actually tested the autofocus in some low light scenarios as well, and it was the same amount of reliability every single time. It's pretty pinpoint accurate, and the Sigma isn't even necessarily a native lens, so I can only imagine when using like a G Master lens, how good the autofocus would be on this camera. So it's something that you don't have to worry about. Now, one problem that I have noticed about the autofocus on the a7 III is, if you have anything on the lens, it's gonna mess up. And I'm talking about anything. We went out one morning at 6 a.m. and it was super foggy and then I got a little bit of dew on the lens. And then I was out there trying to film myself and when I realized after I got my shots, the autofocus just didn't hit any of it. So I had to film that entire shot over. And then when I did it again, it messed up again. So if you guys are trying to use the autofocus on the a7 III, always make sure you don't have anything on the lens. Other than that though, the autofocus is solid, man. I wouldn't say it's as good as like Canon's dual pixel, but it's up there, man. And it's really good. And it's way better than the GH5 in my experiences with using that. So on a native Sigma side, it's awesome. I also have a Sigma MC11 adapter, which I use to adapt my other Canon lenses to the Sony. And that is a little bit iffy. Now, when I say iffy, I'm talking about using actual Canon lenses on the Sigma MC11, not Sigma brand lenses, Canon lenses. Now, all of the Canon lenses that I've owned, that I've tried using the MC11 adapter, autofocus is non-existent. It just, it doesn't hit, it'll never hit. It just does not work. I have a Sigma 35 millimeter, which is a Canon mount, an E-mount. And when I put it on there, the autofocus is solid. It's really just as good as me using this 24 millimeter e-mount so if you're planning on getting a sigma mc11 adapter for the autofocus capabilities make sure that you have sigma brand lenses canon lenses the ones that i have anyways the autofocus was non-existent like it just did not work at all and i mean specifically in video mode for photography that's a different story but for video i can tell you the autofocus is non-existent now one other video feature that i absolutely love and it's probably my 
biggest love in the new Sony cameras is the Super 35 mode. Now, earlier I was telling you guys about the custom buttons that you can set up on the camera and set them to what you like them to be. One of my custom buttons that I mapped is the Super 35 mode. Now, essentially what Super 35 mode is, is it allows you on whatever lens you're using to instantly crop it into Super 35, which is like an APS-C, like a 1.6 or seven times crop. And it's awesome. For me, like when I'm using this 24 millimeter and I don't necessarily want to switch out to a zoom lens, I can just hit my custom button and go straight into the Super 35 mode and I can zoom the camera in and get a little bit more range off of the prime lens that I'm using without having to have an array of lenses on me. And this isn't just for prime lenses. You can use this on zooms. Say you had a 16 to 35 and you wanted to get a little bit more range off of that lens, you can just switch straight into the Super 35 mode. So. That feature right there, I absolutely love, and it's full 4K, so it's no down res in quality at all. It's awesome. The Super 35 mode is a plus, one of my favorite features within this camera. Now, the big thing, the big thing that everybody wants to hear about, the video quality. A camera can have a ton of different features, but if the video quality sucks, what's the use of having a camera, you know what I mean? So straight out the gate, the 4K on the Sony a7 III is point blank amazing. It's super crispy. I believe it's a down sample from like a like a 5K or 6K. But to simplify what I'm saying, the 4K on the Sony a7 III is amazing. It's crispy, it's nice, it's a really good image. That's to be expected though. I mean, Sony's have been consistently putting out really, really, really good 4K quality. And honestly, coming to this camera, this wasn't something that I was second guessing. I knew that the 4K coming out of this camera was gonna be amazing. That's just, that just is what it is. Sony's really good at doing that, especially with the cameras that down sample the image. Now, one thing that I was actually really anxious in terms of video quality to see was how good is the 1080? How good is the slow motion, the 120 frames per second, the 60 frames per second, coming from the GH5 and the different options and stuff that you can do with slow motion on that camera. I was kind of skeptical and I was like, eh, I, I don't think that this is going to be able to do slow motion as good as the GH5. I mean, the GH5 has so many different options. It just looks good. So image quality on the 120 frames per second. How is it? It's okay. It's all right. It's not bad. I shoot music videos primarily, so I use a ton of slow motion for everything. Like when I'm filming B-roll of all the different things that I'm doing in my music videos, I need slow motion. So the slow motion on this camera is okay. It's not bad. The bit rate in itself is just not good though. And hopefully that's something that Sony can improve on in the future. Hopefully within like the A7S III, they'll implement some better bit rates into the slow motion, but the quality's okay. Now, when we get into these low light situations is when you're really gonna see the 120 frames per second video quality really fall off really fast. Once you start increasing those high ISO values, the footage, the quality of it honestly is really not good at all. Now, while I went out and I got some low light shots and the majority of the low light shots that I filmed were actually in 120 frames per second and they were fine, but the majority of them I found myself having to denoise the footage and add in an additional layer of sharpness to the footage just because it was very soft. It was a very soft image. Now, when I was going in and doing the denoising process, it wasn't necessarily because I had a lot of noise within the image. It's just that when I went to apply the color grade that I wanted to the footage, the colors were just breaking. You could just see clear cut separation of certain colors within the gray. You could just see the image like visually breaking. So I don't want to say I was using denoising to take away the noise from the image. I was more so just using it to smooth out those colors and make the gray look a little bit better in the end. Now, while we're on the topic of low light, how's the low light quality? Honestly, this was a no brainer for me as well. I mean, I know Sony is the king of low light and the a7 III is no exception. The low light from the a7 III is absolutely amazing. It's stunning at pretty much any ISO value that you throw at it. Now me, I didn't really get a chance to throw it up to like the 25,000 uh, range, but the majority of the shots that I plan on getting with this camera won't be within that range anyways. This camera can do 6,400 ISO easily, 10,000 ISO easily, and provide you with some usable footage. And that's a no brainer. I mean, if you're looking into Sony, you already know that. Sony does low light better than any other camera company in the business, and that's just point blank. Now another topic that a lot of people don't necessarily know that I'm interested in like that, is photography. I love photography and for my personal brand and the stuff that I'm uploading to Instagram, um, Instagram stories and just using for my promotions, I need high level photography. And for the longest, when I had a GH5, I also had a Canon to handle my photography. Just because me as a person, I never really enjoyed the experience of using 
a mirrorless camera for photography. Something about the shutter sound and just looking through the viewfinder and seeing the image real time before I take it just kind of felt weird to me coming from using and learning to do photography on a DSLR. So the photography aspect of the camera was something that I was honestly interested to see and see if it was something that would make me be able to let go of my Canon camera as well as my GH5. Now using the a7 III, I got to test it in a lot of different scenarios for photography. And honestly, I, I only took pictures on this lens, the Sigma 24 millimeter f1.4. And the images that I took off of this camera blew my mind, like were way beyond my expectations for anything that I would have ever taken on this camera. The autofocus in photography with this camera, even using this lens that isn't really necessarily a Sony brand lens, is pinpoint accurate, it's fast, it hits every single time, it's just sharp. Now within the Sony a7 III, they have a feature which is like eye autofocus. And if you're taking a picture of a person, it literally just sits there and it highlights their eye the entire time you're holding down on the focus point. And whenever you're ready to pull that trigger, it just is pinpoint accurate pretty much every single time. And the concept of seeing the image while I'm looking through the viewfinder real time so I can know what I'm taking before I take it has really grown on me. So the photography of the a7 III has been amazing. I've been loving the experience of it. The autofocus is amazing. It's pinpoint accurate. The images, it's just awesome. I've been taking a ton of pictures on the Sony a7 III and then just instantly transferring them to my phone and editing them in Lightroom Mobile. I've been getting some really amazing images, man. So the photography on the a7 III exceeded way beyond my expectations. So all in all, these are the different ways that I've been using the a7 III and the different ways that I wanted to implement it into my workflow. I mean, I know the a7 III does way more than what I've talked about, but this is just my little corner of what the a7 III can do and what I plan to use it for. So now it's time to talk about the things that I don't necessarily like about the a7 III, the things that I think the GH5 does better than the a7 III and vice versa. Let's get into that. So the first thing, and the biggest thing and my biggest problem personally with the Sony a7 III is the slow motion quality, 120 frames per second. It is 100% better on the GH5 in every aspect. The GH5 has more customization. It has a lot of different ways you can do slow motion. It's just way better. The quality of the slow motion is just way better. And that's on all fronts. It can go all the way up to 180 frames per second. It can do 48, it can do 36, it can do so much more in every single scenario. So the slow motion quality and the slow motion customization, the different ways that you can do slow motion is so much better on the GH5. And ironically, this was my original reason for leaving Sony in the first place, but it's all good. Cause me personally, I've come to realization with myself that it doesn't matter what camera you use, you're always gonna take some sort of hit. If I was using the GH5, I was gonna take the hit on the autofocus. I wasn't gonna have full frame. I wasn't gonna have good low light capabilities. And a little tip to you guys, you're always gonna take some sort of hit. So just get on the camera system that works best for you. Now the next thing is the in-body image stabilization. You really don't know image stabilization until you use the GH5, good image stabilization anyways. Like that thing floats. If you put the GH5 on a gimbal, it's gonna take out all the micro jitters that you're gonna get. It's gonna like, it's it's honestly insane. You really don't know good in-body image stabilization until you use the GH5. So that's another negative that I think the GH5 does better on the forefront of filmmaking. Now for the Sony, what does the Sony do better? Now, straight out of the gate, the colors, the colors that come out of the camera are amazing. And I know that this isn't gonna matter for a lot of people. Like if you can color grade, you can color grade. And it's not that I can't color grade, it's just certain scenarios and situations where I don't wanna film and log and I don't wanna apply this crazy grade just for a YouTube video. And I don't have a ton of time to work out my exposure and make sure that I'm perfectly exposed using the log profile. So this makes the process easier. The colors that come straight out of the camera, even log to log, the Sony just looks better. And I mean, I'll wipe off of my grade and wipe it back on so you guys can see right here what this looks like out of camera. It just, it looks way better than what the GH5 can personally produce in my personal opinion. It, the colors that come out of the camera are better. The next thing is the autofocus. Uh, if you guys know anything about the Lumix series or the GH5 in itself, the autofocus is, is terrible. Now, to be fair, I did not 
update my GH5 when I had it to the latest firmware. I didn't try out the autofocus fixes that they supposedly added. And the main reason that I didn't was because I didn't have any native glass. So to be fair, I didn't try it out. When I used it with the lenses that I used it with, I used it with a ton of lenses actually. And the autofocus just sucks. So, I mean, autofocus on here is way better. It's fast, it's responsive, it's reliable. Next, the low light, uh, no secret, the low light on this camera is better. Not that it's bad on the GH5. I mean, you can go to like 3200 ISO, which isn't bad if you're using lighting for what you're doing, which I do most of the time, but uh, the low light here is just way better. I mean, it's, it just, it can't compete. It can't compete. And the next thing is the photography. Now, a lot of people don't care about photography, but me, my personal brand and what I do, I need solid photography. So the photography here is way better and partially, is the full frame aesthetic. You know, full frame just looks better when you're trying to achieve the shallow depth of field, like what you see right here with the backgrounds. Uh, it's it's just easier, man. It's just it's just way easier. I just realized my lights went off back there. Oh, I see why my freaking, um, my power bank back there went dead, whatever. Um, anyways, to conclude what I was saying, I like the a7 III. It's an amazing camera. It, it works for me and my workflow with creating the content for myself and also the music video. So, I mean, if you want a better uh, aesthetic with uh, depth of field or full frame, you want better low light, you want better autofocus, you want better photography, uh, you want better colors out of the camera, a7 III is, is your go-to. Not that the GH5 is bad. It's it's just, I feel like it's, it's, it's harder to work with in a lot of scenarios. I mean, you need lighting for a lot of the things you're gonna do because the low light isn't that great. To produce decent colors out of the camera, I feel you have to use a log, which a lot of people don't necessarily like to do. Uh, it's it's a toss up. Like I said, whatever camera system you wanna get on, you're gonna have your drawbacks. With the a7 III, I'm comfortable with the ones that I have to accept with this one. Slow motion, yeah, it's whatever, we still don't kill it. So, I mean, there it is, man. Whatever camera you got, just get used to killing it with it, man. Um, just get the one that works best for you. I feel like this is the one that's gonna work best for me for the time being anyway. So, I mean, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, man, or you have any other things that you wanna ask me, make sure you drop them down in the comment section right now. I'll make sure to get back to you guys about that. A lot of people are gonna ask about my picture profile that I've been trying out. I use Cine 4. For the YouTube content for music videos, I'll be using S-Log 2, like I pretty much always do. I like to do log when I'm doing music videos so I can have more room to post to do the color grading. But for YouTube, I want it to be easier. So I've been using Cine 4, like no changes, none of the, the, ex, the extra changes. It's just Cine 4, the stock settings. So that's it, man. Drop this video a like, comment, man. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Peace out, guys.